I'm Nikki Jovakik from Lookup Starter and I'm also Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate. We invited Ross Anderson, a Queensland lot owner, to chat with us today about body corporate management charges and what's really in our contract after his body corporate noticed a number of unusually high fees for the simple task of distributing emails to owners. Ross, welcome and thanks for joining me. Before we begin, I'd like to say that the aim of this video is not to villainise body corporate management companies. There are plenty of firms out there doing a professional, transparent and ethical job. Also, the information in this session is not advice and you should seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in this video. Can you please give us a very brief overview of who you are, Ross? My name is Ross Anderson. I've been involved in Strata World as an owner for about 20 years now, my lovely wife about 12 years ago, started taking an active interest in what was going on and got involved with the Unit Owners Association. And the more I looked, the more concerned I became about a whole lot of issues. The last year, for a number of reasons, I've had to step back from that, but uh, I still take an active interest. So now my initials have gone from UOAQ to AQUO, Active Queensland Unit Thank you, Ross. And you have written content for the Lookup Strata site before as well. And people that are viewing this video probably have read some of your content from our site at some point. You just like to bring interesting information in front of lot owners so they can yep. be aware of what's going on out there. Yep. Systemic issues and um, often endemic issues right through the industry. So why are you here with us today? What's happened in your scheme? Can you well, run us through a scenario of specific charges that have been imposed by your strata management company? The scheme involved has got 62 lots. It's become quite contentious within the community, a number of issues, a number of adjudicators, adjudications flowing through. And it's because of those, I think, we just realised the risk in this particular contract with the body corporate manager we have, where... The documents coming from the commissioner's office to the body corporate manager to be sent out to the owners in relation to final order applications and interim orders, um, they're often quite large. And over a five-month period, if you'd looked, you would have seen the costs being debited to our financial statements was, was huge, growing and regular every month. Another two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 was being added to it. And um, that's what, through some people I knew on the committee, they contacted me about it and saying, is this legal? I said, well, have a look at the contract. And I said, we can't find the contract. And I said, you won't. It will be very difficult because it's not on the portal for the body corporate manager. It wasn't included in the minutes. You have to go back to the original agenda documents. And that's one giant PDF document. And it's buried away in there. Thankfully, I keep all that stuff. Most people don't. So I was able to direct them to the actual contract. And interestingly, the actual fee schedule for additional services, and um, which was a, a first for this body corporate manager because previous uh, contracts, they didn't include the actual fees for additional services. You had to click on a button in their, or a link in their contract and very difficult to find it. Over a five-month period, uh, the overall debit to the accounts was $16,000 for five group emails. And no one on the committee noticed it. So how can that occur, Ross? What were the emails for? Why were there such huge charges for a small amount of emails? Well, the first one, the big one from the commissioner's office was a 78-page PDF attachment. Commissioner's office, it's got all the exhibits. It's sent out to the BCM, the body corporate manager, and they, he in then turns, splits it into two processes. We've got four or five owners are still on hard copy, so he photocopies it and sends it off. But at least you've got a bundle of papers you can see before he sends it off. But the remaining, say, 58 lots, he just flick passes it on to them by a group email. And... What also happens is that we have 58 lots that are not on manual or hard copy, but if they have co-owners, each of whom has an email address, each gets a copy, and it becomes significant. So if you've got a 100-page a attachment, PDF attachment, and it goes to one owner, you will be charged under this regime 
40 cents per page. In other words, $40. If you flick it on to 60 owners, it suddenly becomes two and a half thousand dollars. Now that was the start. And then in October, we had two more came through, both on the same issue, but one was supplementary documents. The, the first lot was 233 pages. Charge for that, 6,200. The second lot was 35 pages. Once again, to 63 owners, $900. So $7,200 for a flick of an email. Then we had another one in um, November, uh, 146 pages, 4,200. Now you push that button and it goes out. And I think this was something which should have attracted the attention of anyone on that committee who kept an eye on what was happening. I would say that you're more attentive than most owners in in Strata and you had access to the document and you'd read the document. So what was it about the additional fees and the way they were represented that sort of made you not aware that this was a charge that could have been passed on to the body corporate? It's There is a doubt. Because once again, I'm not a lawyer. But when you look at a, a contract like with a body corporate manager, it has two layers. One is a fixed fee for a fixed service and then additional fees for additional services. They try to keep the fixed fee down as small as possible because that's what they quote on. But to make it brothel, they try to keep the scope of the fixed services as small as possible. So you need to look at that, not only what it says, but what it doesn't say. And then you'll see the scope for profit enhancement, if we call it that, lies in the additional fees for additional services. When you went to this particular contract in relation to this 40 cents per page, it says and it says only 40 cents per A4 electronic image. It doesn't say per owner recipient. And I'll give you a simple example. If I sent you an email of a one page attachment and you sent it on to someone else, you'd charge 40 cents. I sent you a 100 page PDF attachment, you flick it on under this rule, they charge you $40, 100 by 40 cents. But when you flick it on in the same process to 60 owners, they add in this element of per owner recipient or intended recipient, and it just exponentially grows. So the charges that we're discussing today, they are in the management contract. Um, and I believe that the contract, as you mentioned, is structured at a fixed fee and additional services, which is quite common. Uh, so when you've looked into it, you've since discovered that there are further charges that are occurring too for EGM. We're talking about a, a troubled body corporate and there's lots of litigation coming through and there's lots of documents coming through from the commissioner's office. But when you look at the fixed fee for fixed service, you need to look not only, as I said, not only what it says, what it doesn't say. It doesn't include in fixed service the EGMs, Extraordinary General Meetings. Now, we had one in August last year to, um, are we going to paint the building? And they had three quotes from three, and, and they mounted up to a lot. There are about 110 pages there. That EGM, just for the emails alone, cost us $2,600 apart from all the other associated costs and stuff like that. But it doesn't stop there, Nikki. When you look at fixed fee for fixed service and you go to the AGM, it only covers part of the AGM and the emphasis on part. An AGM normally has three um, lots of e communications. One is the notice, we're going to be having it soon, get your motions in. The second one is the big one, that's the actual agenda documents that go out. The third one is the minutes, and that's normally pretty small too. It's the one in the middle where there's a potential for a lot of um, charges. And the fixed fee for six fixed service only covers the basics, like the agenda notice, the um, some explanatory notices and whatever about the statutory motions and the statutory motions. And in this particular case, the contract for the BCM if he's coming up for renewal. The big pile of documents like owner's motions and or committee motions, they're extra. So in the, for example, the 22 AGM, we spent about $1,500 extra on the AGM just for those email charges over 60, 60 owners. So 
this is what we we you need to look at these contracts. I've just learned that you look at what is there and what is not there. And it's the what is not there is often the thing that you need to say, well, what's going to happen here? And that's what it's relation to. Big part of the AGM, all of the EGM and any other major documents coming through from an, ex from an external source. It adds up to a lot of money. Mm, it certainly does. Um, so just to let our audience know, if you're concerned about the fees that you're being charged or if you're not sure what you're paying even, um, we've recorded a couple of videos in the past that cover this and I'll add the links in the description box below this video and at the very end of the recording today, I'll also uh, leave links to those two videos. We recorded one which was on breaking down the body corporate management contract and showing you what each section of the contract looks like and what you need to be looking for. And also there's one about reading the financials that does cover all of the additional charges as well. And both of those are Queensland specific. And that's the concern, isn't it, Ross, that when you're looking for a new body corporate manager, it is very difficult to compare contracts and to compare charges because they all represent them in a different way and they're all yep. positioned through the contract in a different way as you were saying in some instances they're not even in the contract there's a byline that says check our site um, it sounds like that's been corrected since then but at some point that was happening for your committee as well yep. uh, so it makes it very hard so you're concerned though you're not a committee member you're a lot owner in that building so you're concerned about the role of the committee in responsibility in this matter this particular body corporate manager I don't think he's alone provides a month or a daily update on the financial statements. Everything's been debited and credited. And it also, it's on the portal, any owner can access it. And it's also reported to the committee at the beginning of each um, committee meeting. Now, the, the, I have issues about how transparent those financial statements are because it's very hard to actually look at which ones apply to this body corporate manager for which services. And they're not lumped under, this is how much, this is um, our body corporate manager, and this is what we are paying him for this, 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 and this. You have to go all over the financial statements to find it. And then you have to know what you're looking at. Because often, them, often they are anonymous. You don't know you're looking at it. But the beauty about these reports is that they provide not only what is happening on a year, on a year to date, daily update. It also compares it to the budget for the financial year. Now, in this particular case, by November, we had $17,000 added into the outgoings for a particular line item. And immediately to the right of it, we had a budget for the whole year, $5,000. Now, you don't need to be an accountant or a corporate lawyer to understand this is something we need to look at. Don't think our committee is alone. I think there are other committees out there that aren't looking. And um, often I hear, well, we're just volunteers. And my response always is, you might be a volunteer, but you're not a conscript. You're going to stick your hand up, do the job, or get off and let someone else on who will do it. Not looking, not doing something, I think is really disappointing. Mm. You would imagine that when there's a budget blowout like that, it does ring alarm bells and you would start yep. to look at that. I mean, it's fairly clear. We talk about how um, transparent uh, body corporate management is now compared to 10 years ago. It's changed a lot. We've got portals that are available. We've got information now for lot owners, which wasn't something that was happening 10 years ago. But you still have to look at that information. It's there, but you have to actually look at it and read it and understand it to uh, for it to be any benefit to to the to the owners uh, we've talked before in uh, different sessions about your building is your business and I guess that's kind of got a twofold thing in that it's your business to keep track of it but then it's also your business as in it can be run like a business and you look at the financials on a your regular basis yeah. mm -hmm. Vicky, I've, I've talked to you before about this I first started taking an active interest in this about 10 12 years ago around at the same time you started up look up strata the stuff we started putting out through your AQ and the stuff you started putting through Lookup Strata was unique. There was nothing like that available out there. Now you've built up Lookup Strata to a huge platform and there is so much more information out there and the Strata lawyers will tell us they're getting a lot of business from people who are taking the trouble to look and where necessary going to the Strata lawyers to sort out the more difficult problems. But there is a growing awareness 
You need to look. You need to ask questions. Some of the stuff that's happening is so bizarre that you wouldn't go looking for it. <laughs> and then I have to agree, Ross, because <laughs> I mean, here we are 10 years later. We haven't been doing Q&As for that whole 10 year period, but probably for about seven of those years. And we're still getting unique questions. Now, I believe you've come up with a solution to the problem, which is great. What are you doing about distributing correspondence in the future? There was another adjudication um, or a tranche of adjudication papers coming through on a um, final orders application, 298 pages. And I was involved with it. And I said, it's going to hit your body corporate manager in a couple of days. 298 pages, it's going to cost more than seven grand. I alerted the committee, the rest of the committee, and their surprise told everyone that they weren't even where it was an issue. They asked for a quote from the BCM. He said, yep, 7,000 bucks. So they said, what are we going to do? Well, fortunately, we were able, the three of us, the two committee members and myself, would say, well, look at a solution where you leave the body corporate manager to do the hard copy stuff. No one wants to photocopy 300 by four and mail it out, but get the BCM to email to a designated committee member the, the what, what's going to go at electronically, and then the committee member pass it on themselves free of charge. So it's not difficult, and it's just a question of who does it, whether it's a volunteer committee member or the paid body corporate manager, and that's what they did. Um, and they saved over $7,000 just in that solution. So <laughs> now, is the committee going to do something? They're going to, obviously, they're, they're going to be held to account and be required. Of course, these two new committee members, they're going to be required to follow that in future. Um, but the BCM's contract is coming up for renewal at the end of this year. And I, this is not against the body corporate manager either. Look, he puts up a contract. The committee is supposed to review it and either negotiate it or reject it. But if they're going to put it up to the um, to the owners for approval, of course, it has to go to the owners for approval at a general meeting, well, then they should be happy with it. But when the expenses started coming through, that's when they should anyone should have seen that and done something about it. So I think that should be reflected in how they look at the, the who the BCM will be and what contract we will have with them in the new year. I'm very involved in American history and government, and there's a famous quote from Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he was the third president of the United States. It's one of the signatories for the Declaration of Independence. He said, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. Now, in strata world, particularly with our money, you have to be looking all the time asking questions, keeping an eye on it. And it probably is not that polite to say, but so often, this is the expression I use, in Strider, when you lift up a, a rock, often cockroaches crawl out and you find it, this is not good, this is not good. But it's up to the committee, if you're going to stick your hand up to be on the job, not just a seat warmer, not just a you know, stocking stuffer, you sign up to do the job to the best of your abilities as well. So that's where I'm coming from. We're not going to name who the company is, um, and but they do manage a lot of buildings um, in multiple states around Australia. Yep. Uh, as a lot owner or on a committee, uh, we'd encourage you to have a look at your contract, check the contract, check the wording of the contract, take a close look at the breakdowns of the additionals um, and see what you're actually being charged and why. Are the fees fair? And I guess the thing that you've spoken about too, uh, Ross, with regards to the email and then sending out hard copies, do the fees relate back to effort? You know, profit is the gap between receipts and costs, right? The receipts on this model are enormous and the costs are zero or minimal. And we need to look closely at it. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.